Happy Friday, everybody. How's everybody doing? Hey, Cheers. Good. Happy Friday, Jason. <laughs> Happy, Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for the History Factory plugged in, don't call it viral content extravaganza or something like that. So thank you all uh, for joining us. Um, I'm here uh, I'm here at the bar, you know. <laughs> and, uh, how was everyone's week? This, this week went by faster than the previous ones. I feel like we're really getting into a rhythm of doing nothing here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. It's been like, it's been a curve. It was sort of, the first week was like, no problem. Second week was like, I'm not sure how much longer I can do this. And it's sort of gotten worse. I feel like now it's, it's starting to feel a little bit easier. Like it's finally, I feel like we're getting it down. It's like the stages I, of grieving. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's just accepted <laughs> now that I, I can't go outside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like that last week and I was like, you know what, this is kind of not so bad. And it was my birthday last week and I think that helped. And then this week, I think the kids went back to school, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. And I think for them, it's like they realized like, oh my God, this is going to be going on for a while. So it's kind of, it's kind of a tough week for us. But uh, yeah, my son's like, what do you mean I can't just stay up all night and want to play Fortnite all the time? We're just like, Ugh. anyway, but it's Friday and here we are. Okay. And uh, so uh, we're going to first, I guess, let's, let's start with some introductions uh, for our, our listeners and viewers. Uh, so Sam, why don't we start uh, with you up there since uh, you are partly a, a producer for, for the podcast. So, sure. Sam. Yeah, it's nice to step out from uh, behind the, the microphone here uh, from behind the scenes. I'm uh, Sam Grable. I uh, help put together the podcast and do the marketing. I'm also a marketing manager at History Factory. Um, I am, uh, as you can see, uh, you, they tell you to dress for the job you want. I'm dressing for the weather that I want. I'm currently living in Colorado and there's about a foot of snow on the ground. So, uh, hopefully I can be sipping, uh, cocktails poolside soon. Um, in the meantime though, I want to uh, give a shout out to a local brewery here to support local business. Um, I'm drinking a knotted root beer, which is a local brewery here and, uh, you know, uh, doing as much as I can to help support the local economy. Nice. And you, what are you doing this weekend? Are you going anywhere special? Oh, I'm, I've got a, I've got a long weekend planned of staring out the window. Nice. <laughs> Good for you. Okay. Kaylin, why don't you introduce right. yourself? Hi, I'm Kaylin and I'm an account executive here at History Factory. I'm normally uh, with our Chicago team, but Chicago is kind of a a crowded place to be these days. So I'm actually up at my grandparents' house in uh, Wisconsin, Southern Wisconsin. So to support local Wisconsin breweries, um, I'm actually drinking Spotted Cow. It's by uh, the New Glarus Brewery. New Glarus. Yeah, yes. and you can only get it here in Wisconsin. So please do not come and get it until <laughs> you know, it's fast. <laughs> <laughs> nice don't even look what at you, it anytime. what are you what are you doing this weekend are you going anywhere special there in wisconsin you know uh, we might go uh, you know uh for a walk to the the local kringle that's where they have pickup pastries so you know maybe swing by and get some cheese somewhere but you know <laughs> six feet <laughs> yeah awesome and sarah Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I'm the senior curator here at the History Factory, and um, I work on a lot of our exhibit projects and help with some of the biz dev stuff. Um, I'm drinking sangria, and I am um, in my office with my awesome bookshelf today. And my weekend plans are to clean the house and do some laundry, so really exciting. Nice. And wait, and you're, you're also the author of the infamous... Uh... Sarah Friday email. I yes, I am the Sarah behind the Sarah's Friday email. So we that went out earlier today and got some fan mail, which is exciting. And a couple That's of people exciting. replied back. Um, but yes, so I write the Sarah's Friday email every week. And you say you have no social contact. I you know. <laughs> oh man, and Verena. Hi, um, I'm Verena. You know, like the city in Italy, but not because there's an E in my name instead of an O. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm an associate creative lead here at the History Factory, so I do a lot of content creation. Um, 
whatever, you know, that kind of means to you on all of our different projects. Um, I'm actually drinking a whiskey sour that was made to made for me by my lovely significant other whom I live with. Um, I have very good friends that live in Louisville, Kentucky. And so we go there quite a bit, get a lot of really good bourbon, and then he makes them into whiskey sours. Um, so I'm enjoying that kind of right now. What, uh, what bourbon is in there? Do you know? It's Buffalo Trace, um, also in the Buffalo Trace kind of glass <laughs> that we've got. Ooh, yeah. Ooh fancy. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, then Zach? Oh, I'm uh, Zach Hopkins. I'm a graphic designer. Um, I am drinking a beer from Cigar City. It's a brewery in Tampa, so not local. Feel a little bad not representing uh, Maryland breweries. Uh, but this is an IPA called uh, Space Pope. <laughs> um, and yeah, I've got, I'm on a Zoom call here. My fiance is in the other room on another Zoom call. So we're sort of like a call center. After this, I've got my, uh, my older brother's birthday. So we're doing another Zoom call after that. Um, nice. So yeah, that's, 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 how, that's how we're keeping in touch, at least in my family. Um, and Fantastic. then, yeah, this, this weekend, we got big plans to go and try to find some toilet paper. We've been doing all right. We started with a pretty good stockpile. Yeah. Uh, and it's getting to the point where we're like, all right, we maybe have like a couple weeks of, of, of like runway left here. So we'll be maybe venturing out into the suburbs a little bit to see if we can find a grocery store that doesn't have completely clean shelves. Um, so that should be fun. Yeah, we, we knitted our homemade uh, masks today after the, now Maryland has the ordinance, you have to, has mandatory uh, masks, so. I would have loved to have seen. I would have loved to have seen you knitting. That's good. Oh uh, well, actually, uh, my fiance's made hers. I haven't. I haven't sewn mine yet. So we'll okay. see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's great. We get we get craft projects. You know, fun adventures. It's going good. Good. And Amelia. Um, yeah, How's hi, it going I'm Amelia. It's, it's going okay. I am living right outside New York City, so things are exciting. Um, luckily, I'm not in New York City, so it's not so bad. Um, I am a senior archivist, so all that history stuff, that's me. Um, and I am also doing a local brewery, um, Departed Souls in Jersey City, and I'm drinking Guardians of the Gold Coast. Um, wow. And they're known for their gluten-free beer, which is pretty cool. Um, oh, not that it affects me, but I like supporting, you know, yeah. local organizations <laughs> that do that. Uh, um, yeah. And so will I will be venturing into the city this weekend. No, <laughs> I will definitely not be venturing into the city. I ventured into the city one day after like it sort of shut down and I still feel guilty about that. So there will be no city adventures, but I'm moving at the end of the month. So this weekend will be for packing. Yay. Terrific. <laughs> well, thank you all. This is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk about memes and stuff. So I will say I am drinking a new cocktail. I've been creating a lot of new cocktails over the last few weeks. This is uh, what I call the Italian uh, old man fashioned. Um, it's kind of like an old fashioned, but I've uh, put in the Italian uh, Luxardo uh, liqueur into it for a little bit of cherry. I also smoked it with a smoker that I got for my birthday. And uh, I also am drinking Buffalo Trace because the last place that I was traveling uh, before I got grounded uh, was in Louisville uh, for, the, uh, for the crazy prepper show that I went to. Um, <laughs> So with that, let's get into the topic of the, uh, of the podcast, which is uh, we have uh, assembled this incredible uh, team of talent here uh, to talk really about some of the fun things that uh, we've been finding online and curating over the last uh, few weeks. And uh, in preparation uh, for the show, uh, Sam did a little bit of research and I don't know, other than Sam, does anyone actually know like where the term meme comes from? and how far it goes back. Oh, really? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I was I was equally as surprised when I was speaking to Zach earlier that he knew this because- Okay, all right, Zach. That was funny. Zach, Zach Sam, would You'll steal Sam's though. thunder, it's fine. <laughs> Please, take some heat off of me, Zach. No, I'll, 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 I'll let you go through it. But yeah, Sam, Sam said something to me over Gchat like, Oh, we're gonna do some. We're gonna do like the history of memes. And I was like, oh, cool. You're gonna talk about Richard Dawkins, and he was like, there's, there's no way I could have known that. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, so, uh, so yeah, I guess that uh, I'll segue into that. Um, so 
<laughs> you use the word meme uh, as this kind of pop cultural phenomenon, right? Especially now that everybody's spending so much time on social media. I would guarantee you that the majority of people have absolutely no idea that this comes from a pretty, re a pretty revolutionary, uh, evolutionary biologist by the name of Richard Dawkins. Um, in 1976, he wrote a book called The Selfish Gene. Um, now, the idea behind this theory is that ideas are able to be reproduced and mutate the same way that genes do. Yeah. So uh, it, the original term that he came up with is, uh, and I apologize because I am not a Greco-linguist here. Um, it comes from the Greek memima, meme, uh, which means that which that can be replicated. So it was just uh, it was just shortened to meme. Um, now the examples he used were uh, God, nursery rhymes, and jokes. So um, you know, take that for what it is. Um, but that's where it comes from. And I, I very highly doubt that uh, people uh, or influencers, I should say, um, would would really know the origin of that, that it comes from an evolutionary biology textbook. <laughs> yeah, I'd yeah. be uh, I'd be interested to know uh, when the term went from something that Richard Dawkins wrote about in a book in 1977 to something that we call like a picture of a cat on the Internet that has text on the top and the bottom. Um, I'd be curious. Well, I don't have an exact uh, an exact date, um, but we can get into that a little bit more. Um, I, you know, I, I I think it's kind of interesting that um, this theory didn't obviously the idea of a meme predates this theory, right? So we're talking about cave paintings originally. Um, we're talking about uh, fairy tales, uh, like as like Dawkins uh, called out jokes. Yeah, it's um, like folklore. Folklore, exactly. Um, and I mean, if you think about it, you know, this goes back to uh, like the Iliad and the Odyssey, right? It was traveling bards who were going around telling these stories that everybody would add their own embellishment to. And in a way, what we do at History Factory is create memes. You know, we're, we're picking up on these different stories that uh, various organizations have that, uh, that want to be retold, but we're reinterpreting them in, in new and, and interesting ways that can be used for various purposes. What, uh, um, what were some of the memes that like came about? What were some, what are some of the common memes that were sort of pre-internet to Zach's point? Uh, well, I mean, I think the, the OG would be cave paintings, right? Uh, yeah. You know, people left those uh, at, in the caves that they were living in, their dwellings, and other people would come along not really understanding the original intention of them. Um, so whatever uh, group of, you know, Neanderthal or Homo sapien, whatever, stumbled in upon that cave, they would take a look and say, okay, well, this may have been a hunt. It may, they might have tamed the lion. Who knows? Um, you know, so I think that uh, that is the original, kind of goes back to the original ones, especially in the graphic form that we know them today. Um, fast forward. 10 or 20,000 years or so. There's nothing happened in between. Um, and around World War II, we get this guy named Kilroy. Now, Kilroy, Kilroy was a very kind of crude drawing. Uh, some say that his nose rese resembled a phallus. Um, and uh, he would be kind of painted on walls uh, and kind of appear in barracks and things like that, uh, wherever Allied troops were. Now, this could have been kind of interpreted as uh, this guy is here fighting with us. It, it could have just been a funny drawing that somebody said, hey, this guy's nose looks like a phallus, you know, who knows. Um, but uh, that kind of- I just of Googled Kilroy on Google Images. I don't know what you're talking about, Sam. I mean, you... <laughs> <laughs> Some people, not me, not me. Anyway, um, moving forward to like the 60s and 70s, we get uh, uh, the Frodo Lives movement. Now, um, this comes from Lord of the Rings. So uh, the idea here is this was kind of in the middle of the counterculture movement. So um, there is a theory that Tolkien had that that Frodo was being sent to do the bidding of higher powers. Um, you know, he's this hobbit from you know middle of nowhere. It doesn't you know he's not really affected by these world these the goings on of the world really. Um, so the idea is that young men were being sent 
by uh, political powers to fight in Vietnam, which is really doesn't affect them. So you get all kinds of bumper stickers, uh, t-shirts, mm -hmm. flags, uh, pins that are kind of replicated all over and everybody kind of has their own interpretation of what that means. But the underlying idea there is that, um, there, that young men are being sent against their will or really, you know, to, to, to fight in a war that doesn't necessarily affect them. So that kind of gets us a little bit, a little bit closer. Now, um, in terms of what we know, uh, the internet uh, really started around the 80s with uh, very, very basic uh, emoticons, right? If you uh, have ever texted, which I'm sure most people listening to this podcast have, uh, you get the, the semicolon or the colon with the uh, parentheses. Now that is kind of the first meme, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's a graphic representation of an idea, or di computer meme, I should say. Um, after that, we get uh, moving on to Microsoft Paint, you know, basic images with text kind of superimposed on it that was shared around the web 1.0, which predates me for sure. Uh, but from my research, um, you know, uh, web rings is kind of how they were spread. After that, we get things uh, in GIF form, GIF form, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, um, I'm sure maybe some people here uh, remember hamster dance. Um, oh, yeah. That one was the first. Oh, now I do. <laughs> right, exactly. I, can't, I can't get this. I personally Zach's can't. Get like, when are the cats? When <laughs> come the cats? Um, so uh, that became what we'll call the first. And I'm going to go ahead and and break the first rule of this one, which is every time you say viral, take a drink. Oh yeah, oh, I forgot go. about that. Mm. Um, became the first communicable. The offender or all of us. I, I thought it was just I the just, offender. It really should just be the offender. <laughs> you know, solidarity and all that. Yeah, yeah solidarity. <laughs> We're all in this together, Amelia. Yeah. Um, um, so that one became like really the first that just absolutely blew up. Um, I mean, I mean, like millions of views. After that, we get uh, things being spread around on internet chat rooms like 4chan. Um, obviously, now 4chan we know is a uh, kind of uh, politically charged uh, alt, alt right um way uh or i guess uh method of communication but you get memes like pepe the frog um look it up <laughs> um and then uh yeah it, that's kind of where where how we get to where we are today where you get uh throughout through these chat rooms and social media now we get people kind of remixing and sharing ideas uh a lot like richard dawkins had uh had uh had suggested. So um, as we get into uh, our favorite memes, you'll see that there's a lot of things that are coming from pop culture that are kind of uh, adapted for whatever the current events are. Um, so we'll see things from, you know, images from like Scooby-Doo and things like that, which are, obviously Scooby-Doo was made seven, in the 70s or in 80s. Um, but uh, now people are taking like screenshots from that and adding kind of more culturally relevant um, ideas on top of it in uh, the form of uh, just like plain text. So, right. And Fresh. of course, for the, and for those of us now, you know, with kids, uh, my kids don't understand the original sort of origin stories of these references. They just think they're memes. So you know, <laughs> it's like, they think Michael Jordan is like a guy. He's Oh, the crying guy. Oh yeah. The <laughs> crying guy. No. Exactly. Like, you know, <laughs> anyway. So, all right. So, well, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that backstory, uh, Sam. And um, so, yeah, we, we thought, you know, and as I, as I say, sort of in the opening remarks of the podcast, you know, it's like, uh, one of the signs of sort of, sort of human expression right now, you know, whatever, 400 years ago, you know, they had the, the, the what's the, the Daniel Defoe book, you know, the, uh, the journal of the plague year and historians could get a sense of what it was like in 1665 London. And for uh, COVID-19 2020 historians, a hundred years from now, we'll have all of our memes uh, to get a sense of, of God human us. expression and our, our, <laughs> our, our, our our sense of uh, innovation. So, yeah, we Which may really not be improved since then, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we may not be as uh, we may not be as resilient or as strong as you know our parents or grandparents' generation, but we've got a really strong social game. 
So, um, so with that said, uh, let's get started and let's uh, start talking about some of our favorite memes uh, from the uh, early days of the coronavirus era. Kalen will be our first contributor. So Kalen, any, uh, any fun things to share from the last uh, month on social media? So I have to, I got to be honest with the group. So my social media experience, I've, I've kind of transitioned into a curated experience because uh, some of most of the history factor people know, but I, I am one of the COVID-19 weddings. So, or, you know, people affected by COVID-19 were trying to plan a wedding. So yeah. most, so up until this point, like most of my social media content was like wedding porn. And it was great and it was a wonderful distraction but now it's just sad pictures of brides in face masks <laughs> and uh um and so long story short my my fiance walter kind of gives me the best the best of the internet every night so he's just like no nope, no nope, just this is what's important this is what you missed here look at this so um so i pulled a couple a couple of things i, I tried to you know pick a variety of, of content. Um, I, the first example that we've got up here on the screen is from Netflix. And I feel like if Netflix wasn't already an intimate part of your life, um, it now is. <laughs> and uh, I, I think it, it only, you know, a big source of pictures and images and inside jokes for memes are TVs and movies. And, you know, so Netflix obviously has to respond in some capacity with COVID-19 memes like from their own content. So I just pulled like a couple of, of examples. Obviously, you know, are you staying in bed all day? Um, Sam, if you want to click to the next one, I think it's gotcha. the sweater one. Yeah, this one's great. You know, didn't you wear that sweater yesterday? Yeah, mom, I did because I'm disgusting. Um, so what I, what I like about what Netflix did, yeah, this one's great too. Um, this one's from Community, if anybody here is fans of Community. Um, April Fool's Day is banished, okay? April 1st is officially March 32nd, uh, forever. <laughs> I felt like we were on March 65th by the end of the month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so Netflix, I, I think, did a really great job of just taking what they already had and making it, you know, COVID-19 relevant, um, especially since we're all streaming so much Netflix content right now. Uh, for the la just the last piece uh, that I pulled is I feel like, you know, was particularly relevant to um, like the stay at home workout phase that we're all kind of going through. Maybe some of us in more capacities than others. Um, but uh, Nike put out this on Instagram and you know, it's, you know, if you've ever dreamed of playing for millions around the world, now is your chance playing side play for the world. And I just, you know, I feel like I've just been bombarded with like live workout streams or like, you know, advertisements to try and get me to go onto some sort of online workout plan. Um, so this kind of felt like a refreshing take on just like indoor athleticism, I guess, and and realizing that even, you know, professional athletes are stuck at home right now. Um, Nike also did kind of a cool uh, relay challenge, I'd say, yeah, where you can, you know, you take something that looks like a baton, uh, and you know, you run around your apartment or your house or wherever you're kept up and, um, they put together a pretty cool montage. So, um, so yeah, I just thought this was kind of a neat example, uh, that kind of cut through all of the, all of what I feel like has just been inundating workout <laughs> stuff from home. Hmm. All right, cool. Kaylin, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, that was the last one, right? There yep. It was. Amelia, All right. up next. Amelia, what you got? All right. So um, I definitely just pulled like from my network, which has been very museum arts um, singing oriented, because basically how I spend my time is going to theater. So that's not been happening. So um, to start with, I just, um, I lived in France for a year. So anything like with a French like twist, I love. Um, so these, it's like the Getty sort of presentations, but it's just um, a family redoing a portion of the bio tapestry, which 
I love that they even included the words. You know, they have the words spelled <laughs> out and taped up, and I just found that really funny. Um, and then on the That's other awesome. side, there's um, a couple who owns a costume shop in Buckhamshire, and they, when they go for their social distancing walks, they wear their clothes because they're like, well, no one else is wearing them. We're not renting them to anyone. Why the heck not? And so they've just been walking around their town in these like period clothes. And they actually say they've made way more friends now by wearing these clothes. They're like, from six feet. We've been waving from six feet. But everyone wants to like know why they have these clothes, what's going on, etc. And that just made me so absurdly happy. I think I just love the concept of actually not just going out because you feel like you need fresh air, but like doing something with going out. So I like that they were having fun with it, I think. So that was where that came from. I love that. I love that example. So like period piece dramas are like kind of my guilty pleasure. Like if there's like a historical kind of fiction show, like I'm watching it. Um, yeah. So to see this, I've just had, like, I just kind of laughed about it because so much a part of those films is, like, people are always getting up to kind of go on these country walks or just kind of, like, walk about the room, you know what I mean? It's kind of right. how they presented, and you're like, right, because women were wearing corsets, like, couldn't breathe, and they, like, couldn't do anything, so they just walked around. Um, so I just thought this was, like, such a fun example and, like, something that I also just see in all these, like, you know, shows that I'm streaming because we're stuck inside. Right. But it's also they couldn't do anything else, which is, I think, more how we feel than we ever have before. Like, oh, yeah. I will go for a really long walk because there's nothing else to do. Oh. Oh, wait, one more. Sorry, I forgot there was one more. Uh, so these were just, sorry, more of my final things. Um, I just thought it was fun. Like, we're, people are comparing it to the Depression now. So just this idea that we're all going to have these weird things that our grandkids do not understand, like these weird little habits, like why do they wear face masks when they go outside? Why are they Clorox wiping the grocery bags? Like all of those things. Um, and then the final one is, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen these going around, these quarantine houses. And so they put like all sorts of different ones, but this was a Shakespeare one that I had a lot of fun with. Um, mainly because I posted in a Shakespeare Facebook group that I'm a part of and people did a lot of back and forth about the merits. Um, I think we generally agreed that house four would be good because at least there's a dog. So, you know, it makes everything oh. better. <laughs> it gets you out of the house a few times a day. Exactly. Long, right? And we can just make Hamlet do the bartending. So like it will work out okay. <laughs> you don't have to talk to him too much. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you, Amelia. Yep. That that last one also reminds me of one I saw a couple of weeks ago, which cracked me up. I don't know if you guys saw this one. It was um, uh, something like uh, looking at the map and trying to figure out where I may go this weekend. Yeah. And it's and it's the floor plan of like yeah. a one bedroom apartment. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's your kitchen, awesome. your bathroom, your <laughs> living room. Living room. <laughs> It absolutely slayed me. I've also seen, so I'm a, I'm a big part of a, a, a bunch of travel groups and we did the same thing or I've seen the same thing, but it's uh, changing the different rooms or areas of your house into airport codes. So like, <laughs> That's the awesome. PRM is, you know, bedroom or bathroom and living room L LVR or something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, where's my next destination this week? <laughs> Exactly. Anyways, for you too. Your turn. Yeah. Oh, um, this one, my mom's a math teacher, so anytime I see a math <laughs> thing, I have to share it with her. And um, I, you know, a while back I saw there was somebody posted a picture of a guy with a in the grocery store with like a giant cart full of watermelons, and they're like, I found the guy from the story problem. So this was another one that came up that you know, 20 years later, my son doing a math problem, dad, why would John buy 50 rolls of toilet paper? And just being like, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> like, like, there are some days where it's like, yeah, I, I am, I am living some weird math story problem suddenly, but whatever. Anyway. Um, again, this is, this is an example of, of taking things that are from popular culture and kind of remixing yeah. them for, you know, taking on it for taking on a new life. Um, obviously, this is from the Joker. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I think it was best picture. That, no, sorry, Parasite was best picture. He was best actor this year. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Little Joaquin. 
Yep. And cried. <laughs> so, and then my favorite one. Um, so I don't know if anybody's followed the National Cowboy Museum. I love I, the National Cowboy I, Museum. I, I didn't follow them personally, but I found this. Um, a lot of people started reposting it and it did go viral. Like absolutely viral. Here, have a drink. Mm -hmm. um, it, so the museum, obviously, mm -hmm. it's in Oklahoma. Um, and it's a mid-sized museum. It's not huge, but they've got a really good collection and um, they've got a decent social media presence. And so when the museum shut down, um, the, the staff is obviously all home, the marketing and social media staff, but um, the security guard is still there. And they asked him, his name is Tim, and they asked him to take some pictures and help post on social media. And it resulted in an authentic innocence that you cannot fake. Um, he's, you can kind of see a picture of him down at the bottom. Um, he's very dad vibes and he's learning social media and he's learning about hashtags. Um, so he signs everything. He writes out the word hashtag John Wayne. And then, so the top one you can see, realize I've been doing the hashtags wrong. I need to use that pound sign from the phone I'm learning. Here's his costume from True Grit. So he gives you some content and then he's like, pound sign, hashtag John Wayne. Thanks, yeah. Tim. It's even hashtag <laughs> National Cowboy. It's almost as if we had our own yes. team running our social yes. media, right? So, and then, and then my, I think my absolute favorite was later that day, his, the one top right, Seth in marketing said people would love to have me take some photos of our selfie stations. Here's one from the rodeo gallery. And the selfie <laughs> station is a backdrop <laughs> where you can stand and take a selfie and you can see what's behind you in the picture. And he was being very literal and took a picture of the selfie station as in like the dot on the floor. And then his correction, which is a little better, was I didn't, the bottom left, I didn't get the selfie station photo quite right. I get it now. Here it is. So he's down on the floor taking a selfie with the dot sticker still. You never do find out what the roto, rotary, ro, rodeo gallery looks like. So what's Tim's regular job again? He's the security guard. And he's there during the day um, because the museum shut down, the museums still need their security around so that no one sure. breaks in. Example, the Netherlands recently. Um, so he's the security guard and he's patrolling and taking pictures of his favorite stuff in the museum. Um, one of the other posts he talks, he's, he shows off his favorite space, which is this like replica saloon. And he's like, by the way, the Wi-Fi in here is great. <laughs> You're like, didn't need to know, but okay. Um, yeah. And then the one more recently, someone suggested I post a TikTok. So obviously, again, he's learning social media. He isn't a millennial to know what TikTok is. Um, so he posted a photo of the clock from their collection, <laughs> which is, he, again, I mean, he means well. And there's a level amazing. of genuineness that's incredible. So awesome. It's amazing. Well, I mean, what, what, what strikes me about this, which I think is really interesting, is that if you were to sort of flip it around the other way, would a social media manager be able to provide as much efficacy as a security guard as the yes. security guard apparently is able to make as the social media manager? Yeah. Absolutely. No, it is. And it's the their Twitter feed has blown up. And obviously, it, they, they've... He's evolved it in the last in the last two weeks since he started posting these in in mid March, um, yeah. and you know learned a little more from people's comments. But they're still they're letting him continue to run it, um, and well, which is kudos to the museum. Have you and, seen? Like, they now have T-shirts that say hashtag the cowboy yes. on the back. Yeah, yes. and they sold out <laughs> immediately. Like They've as got, soon as they got them in. I feel like it's a missed opportunity that Tim hasn't been promoted to sheriff yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would be you know, amazing. Really, 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 <laughs> so, um, but it, it was, I mean, they got written up in BuzzFeed. They got really good media coverage because they let the security guard just have at their social media, which some places would be too controlling over, you know, and wouldn't want to let somebody else just run with it. And I give a huge credit to the museum for continuing being like, you know what? He's become really popular. He's a thing. He's on board with it. He thinks it's fun. And the museum has gained thousands of new followers and they're like all right just have at it tim keep posting so yeah. if you want to if you want an interesting follow tim at the national cowboy museum is giving you your hashtag john wayne post for the day that's great i love it yeah amazing 
Tim, could please do us all a favor and don't advance your skills all that much. They're perfect just as they are. <laughs> <laughs> really are. Yeah. They really are. Good stuff. All right. Uh, shall we move on? Please. Yeah. Good job, Sarah. Oh, me. Hello. Hey, hey. Let's go. I'm going to do mine quick. All right. So I, you know, it, you know, there's those things that you see and they make you laugh and then you don't expect them to sort of stick with you and haunt you. This has been one of those. This came out like three, four weeks ago from one of my friends, how we're all going to look after 18 months of cutting our own hair. And when it came out, one of the reasons why I laughed was because like, just as we were sort of moving into kind of lockdown mode, I was frantically trying to get my hair cut and I couldn't get it cut. And I'm now dealing with, you know, the consequences of that. So I've got this kind of side clops situation happening. And um, so I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to, you know, am I going to cut it? Am I going to shave it completely off? Am I just going to let it go? And uh, so as, as we're going through this experience, I'm starting to sort of think back and I've been laughing about this, um, about this meme because it suddenly is hitting close to home because, you know, a few weeks ago I was like, are we really, you know, not going to be able to get our, our haircut for a while? And now I'm thinking, oh man, maybe we're not going to get our haircut for quite a while. So I thought this one, this one was really funny. Have you guys seen this one, by the way? I haven't, no. <laughs> no. I've seen but almost all the other ones, but this I've is- I've seen this the is, other this ones is original. <laughs> with a similar theme, but not this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so anyway, so this one really resonated for me. Um, the next one, uh, which, yeah, Amelia, you referenced this before. I absolutely um, loved the whole Getty Museum Challenge where they posted, um, iconic pieces of art and then have people basically recreate these images from home. <laughs> um, and they were, they were just amazing. <laughs> so um, I actually had a friend participate. She works at the Getty and she did oh, one wow. of them uh, and then got called out in the New York times, which was really cool. Like her little selfie. Which one was hers? Um, she didn't do a person one. She did a still life. So she oh yeah, so they have those like as well, and, where you can yeah. use like yeah stuff at home. Yeah. yeah, so they've done a number of different variations on this, but they've been hilarious and so creative. And yeah, I really got a kick out of these. Okay, Verena, yep. what do we have? So many things. Um, so first of all, I think we would be completely rem like just remiss if we did not talk a little bit about Tiger King. Um, uh, yeah. I was so happy when I saw this. <laughs> yeah, like it's, 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 it's I had a, I felt a lot of emotions when I saw this. It was <laughs> happy like, and sad oh, and and everything at once. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, my yeah. Fiance and I like saw Tiger King pop up in our like Netflix recommended shows mm -hmm. and it was like on day one of quarantine. And I was like, oh no, this is gonna be a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, has it been a thing yet for you, Kaylin? Or is it, it still is uh... good. we haven't watched it, I think for that reason. <laughs> well, you don't know what you're missing out on. <laughs> yeah. First of all, if you haven't seen it, you have to. I honestly <laughs> recommend taking the time to watch it. We watch a ton of just streaming video in this house. Um, I think we're streaming like Ozarks like right now. Um, another really good show. If you know. Ozarks is good, right? Very good. We actually um, just watched the the pilot last night and had big plans for this weekend to really crush through the first and second seasons. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's the way to do it. So um, yeah, so I think we watched Tiger King like really right as it came out, and I was like vaguely familiar with the podcast about the story. I'm not gonna like reveal any particular spoilers, but I'm sure kind of everyone maybe has seen kind of the main character of the show is this guy, Joe Exotic. You know, he runs this um, kind of like exotic animal, um, like zoo in Oklahoma. Um, and he's just a very, he's a character for really lack of a better term, wears a lot of fun things, has a mullet, has like bleached hair, is just a character. Um, so I saw originally like this kind of meme, sorry, it went viral. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow um, yeah and i originally saw it in this kind of form um like if lisa frank if a lisa frank notebook was a person so um growing up at least for me lisa frank 
you know, known for like a ton of like wonderful colors and animals and all these types of things on like school supplies, basically like whole. I feel like she was a currency almost, like a social yeah. currency. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it was a little bit of a status symbol, I guess, if you had, mm -hmm. you know, Lisa Frank. Um, <laughs> so I originally saw this, thought it was so funny. And then maybe like a day later, saw the next thing. So an actual like graphic artist like um, saw the photo um, and ended up taking like different like elements of Lisa Frank artwork. So like this, um, you know, the tiger that's here is part of like kind of a very iconic Lisa Frank folder. Um, the faces of certain ca ca characters, hair from different places and kind of like composited them all together to create this. And so she posted it on kind of her personal page and then Lisa Frank like picked it up and it just kind of became a thing. And I just loved it mainly because it combines, you know, Tiger King is this kind of big, just show that everyone's watching. And also this kind of like nostalgic brand, at least from my childhood was just the combination of the two was great. And I loved it. Cool. Another thing that I've kind of seen similar to kind of what kaylin has been saying about seeing a lot of just kind of like fitness kind of influencers, I've just seen a lot of like food based stuff. Food influencers, people don't like the banana bread, the the whipped coffee thing that I haven't made yet. Um, so there was this, I've seen this kind of tweet that was like retweeted in various accounts, but like every chef right now, today I'm gonna show you how to make something simple with ingredients everyone has in their pantry since you can't go to the store. I'm starting with Madagascar vanilla hemp milk and a single feather from a dodo bird. Like, <laughs> I would look at these recipes that like certain like influencers would post and I'd be like, I don't have that in my like quarantine <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to make it, but like, okay. Um, but I do have a friend who kind of has like a food account. She's a kind of amateur chef um, and likes to be kind of a part of this like food kind of influencer community. And she kind of turned me on to the Martha Stewart kind of page, um, Instagram page. And like, Martha Stewart, not really somebody that I would engage with normally. Um, I kind of associate her with just like her TV show, her magazine, you know, her friendship with Snoop Dogg, that being her kind of thing. Um, <laughs> and like, so now kind of exploring her page, she started her, doing- Her rap sheet. Yeah, that too. Um, um, but she started this kind of like homeschool, kind of what she's calling like homeschooling um, kind of series where she just she gets like herself as well as people who I think write articles and things like that for her magazine have just done kind of a series on cooking organizing your home cleaning products entertaining your children um that are like very simple use things that you would have are kind of just easy to understand and easy to follow and I thought it was kind of a great a great job of what other people on the internet maybe weren't doing so well of like just really simplifying what they might put in let's say their magazine and translating that into what they put on instagram so i really like it and for somebody you know who wouldn't normally engage with like martha stewart as a brand like now i'm engaged with it which is kind of cool um and interesting cool like it oh yeah taco bell i forgot i had this in here um so first of all, I love fast food, <laughs> love it. <laughs> and I obviously, I follow a lot of just kind of like different like food brands because I think it's interesting what they do. Um, but Taco Bell in particular has just kind of just like shamelessly like gotten on the kind of quarantine band bandwagon. And because I think a lot of people obviously can't go outside and get Taco Bell, um, even though they do offer delivery now. In drive through places. also in my area. Yeah. Um, they kind um, of have just like capitalized on other things to kind of promote their brand and honestly, probably drive sales. So like um, in kind of the top left, they've created just a different like Zoom backgrounds um, that have to do with Taco Bell that you can use in kind of your company happy hours. Um, they've created like coloring sheets for you to just kind of, you know, I've seen a lot of like coloring, puzzles, crocheting, a lot of like these craft things that are happening at home um, as people, you know, just figure out like new hobbies now that we can't go outside. So the coloring sheets and they developed a puzzle that they were selling um, and that you could buy, which I kind of just thought it was creative. I could totally see it as like 
a gag gift that maybe somebody sends to another person, you know what I mean? Cause you couldn't be there for their birthday or something. Um, and again, just a different way to like drive people to Taco Bell when they can't actually have Taco Bell potentially. Um, so I thought it was kind of fun. Awesome. Thank you. Loved all of it. Zach, what do we have next? Oh, just a, a, a smattering of, of different meme content. Uh, so on the left, we have uh, just sort of like a, a retrospective look, like what's it going to look like, you know, 20 years from now, you know, similar theme to something somebody else shared. Um, but so, you know, grandma, what were you doing back in 2020? He was like, oh, just posting memes and hanging out on Reddit. Like really, really for me, uh, nothing uh, wasn't particularly, uh, nothing particularly interesting was going on, just sitting at home posting on Reddit. And Reddit actually on the uh, memes subsection of the site had a memonavirus event um, where basically for the Reddit community, uh, they had an event, which sort of a competition just to come up with, you know, the funniest, most entertaining stuff uh, post on this specific page. You get little like fake internet points and awards and stuff for that. Um, but actually through Reddit, which is sort of a forum based thing, um, you could be infected. So this little tag uh, next to the name at the top, um, basically if someone were to respond to your comment, then they would become infected. So this tag or this little like bit of flare was spreading throughout the users in the Reddit community, sort of mirroring the coronavirus thing that's happening, but also wow. just a way for people to, to come together and, and communicate with each other and share content and sort of raise each other's spirits um, in sort of a, a fun themed uh, sort of a way. Uh, so that has been sort of fun. And you did an amazing job, Zach, of navigating through that uh, description without dropping the V word, except for when you were using it in the broader context of another word. So <laughs> that was very well executed on your part. Like half a sip, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, half sip. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, so <laughs> these, these, these are, these are two. You need to that... pour from six feet, I think, is really. <laughs> oh, <interesting. laughs> so these are, these are two uh, that I very closely relate to. I think I saw another one where it had a calendar and it was just the beginning of every day is crossed out. So they all just say day. Day, day, day. <laughs> there's really not a huge difference between the weekend and weekdays anymore even by week two it was like wait what day is it um and then on the right very accurate you know I, now that i'm working from home I'm, I'm in a one bedroom apartment so basically just going from my room where i do my job to my room where i sleep um, I, I had to make like a special rule where i only sit in this area of the room when i'm working and then if i want to be on my laptop not working i have to go over to the couch so you gotta have you gotta separate it up a little bit but this is really truly my life summed up in two pictures so really really take that uh, very close to heart this one on the left is again sort, sort of like a, a combination of uh combination of different memes so like the the whole i guess you know ptsd remembering the past and then combining that uh with just this hilarious picture of a hamster so in the year 2040, Carol has 30 rolls of toilet paper. I'm like, oh my God, immediately having flashbacks. Um, and then again, in, in the world today, uh, you know, introverts are really, really thriving. Finally, you know, we, we get praised for our ability to, to stay indoors and, and just look at memes on our phone all day. <laughs> oh, fantastic. All right, uh, Sam, I think you're the last one. <laughs> All right, uh, by the grace of God. Um, so uh, this first one on the left here, uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm a, I, I run our social media for History Factory and I am a big consumer of meme content. Absolutely love this stuff. It's what I do in my free time, you might say. Um, it has become almost a bittersweet thing every time I see uh, something that's really funny when it's just like, man, that's good, but shit, this sucks, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. So uh, that's, uh, this one kind of hit a little bit close to home, um, as did the next one, which you'll see is a, a South Park uh, meme where it's me passing the time in quarantine. Now there's an episode where a, a, a Whole Foods moves into South Park and, uh, Randy, who's the, the character pictured here, um, becomes or uh, tries to get out of uh, you know his lower class status and uh, is trying to do classy things, uh, which involves uh, flights of wine and wine tasting. Uh, 
Now, um, I don't know about any of you, but uh, these days, uh, six glasses of wine seems about about on par. No, I'm joking. Uh, but, you know, I find myself increasingly drinking through this. So um, anyway. My Cheers. brother sent me a picture of like six glasses of bourbon one day. He was like, I'm tasting all the different bourbons. So, you know, I think this, uh, this, this tracks. Yeah, anyway, cheer, <laughs> cheers to that. Cheers to that. <laughs> I don't have any more alcohol. <laughs> um, so kind of building off of the previous uh, Zoom uh, comedy, obviously this, uh, this, this one on the left here has some of probably the, the most annoying characters of television and pop culture over the last few years. Um, <laughs> I love this one. Yeah, and obviously the center square has to be Sheldon, probably the most annoying one. Um, but we've got Carol Baskin, shout out to Tiger to Tiger King. Um, we've got characters from Forrest Gump, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Breaking Bad, um, and then my personal two favorite musician musicians, uh, Cardi B and uh, Chad Kroger of Nickelback. Um, yeah. Yeah, so there yeah, are a lot. There's a lot there to not like. I'm not sure that I get the grandpa from uh, from uh, Willy Wonka though. What really? do you mean? The whole time, <laughs> the most negative person. I mean, he's the worst. He's the worst yeah. character. Yeah. Hangs out in bed until he gets something he wants. He can, he can obviously we, walk the whole time. You can clearly see your future here. Um, <laughs> I take your point. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Especially with that hair. I mean, it's it's not trending in the right direction. <laughs> that's <laughs> me in like that's me in like a month. He was he was the original one in quarantine. So yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. Yep. And then uh, on the right here, we've got conference call bingo. I always like to keep this one up next to uh, any Zoom call I'm having. I've actually been uh, keeping track myself during this one. Um, but no, it, no, it, it, I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going back to, uh, I think it was Verena who, who was, or no, Sarah, who was saying, you know, my, I found out my spouse is a, let's circle back to this type of person. Um, this is just pure corporate jargon, which uh, I'm, I know all of us have, in, have encountered. Probably most of us today could have filled out this board. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, anyway, that, the, uh, these are, this is how I'm keeping myself entertained during work. Um, <laughs> And then uh, more more Zoom uh, comedy here. Um, the Last Supper um, had it been on Zoom. Uh, you know, Judas, are you here? <laughs> anyway, um, as if they were uh, also writing the uh, Declaration of Independence over Zoom. Um, maybe nothing would have gotten done there. Um, and anyway, over to the final one, which uh, without getting too political here. Um, this Drake meme on the left has become, again, uh, very widely spread. Um, it can be used for all kinds of different things. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of, and, and you know, at History Factory, we are very much on the pulse of what's going on um, in terms of corporate America, corporate world. And one thing that we're noticing, or one thing that I've noticed is that there's a lot of, uh, a kind of almost like empty gestures going on here where it's companies saying, yes, we're totally in support of essential workers. We're really doing these things that are, are, are helping everybody. Um, but it's just the, like, it, it's just commercials saying thank you. Um, so this kind of just highlights that like, you know, you're a hero. Okay, great. This is worthless. Thank you. Uh, or, you know, we'd rather pay for a commercial instead of actually paying these workers. Um, you know, there are a lot of a lot of really awesome examples of companies that are doing the right thing, and small businesses, uh, specifically restaurants, and and kind of like in the food industry, who are really really pulling together. And you know, these are companies who are uh, sorry, restaurants who are almost scraping by. You know, they're in the worst possible position right now, and yet they're churning out meals for hospital workers. Um, in Chicago, there's a really famous uh, pizza place called Demos, which is actually turning their pizza ovens in, like they're retooling them in order to create face masks to, to like kind of like soften the PVC that they can melt for people, uh, for healthcare workers um, in order to create these masks. And uh, it just seems really important that companies and different businesses right now are really putting their money where their mouth is. Um, as opposed to just kind of, you know, 
sending off that tweet or whatever saying, hey, thank you, we support you. Um, anyway, it's kind of my soapbox that I'm standing on right now, but uh, with my wife, like I said before, as, as a healthcare worker, uh, I feel it's really important that everybody does their part here. So anyway, uh, off, the soap, off the soapbox now. Thanks, Sam. And it, it really is amazing when you look at how particularly small companies are having to reinvent themselves to get through this. I mean, um, you know, we've got restaurants here in our community that, uh, you know, like almost overnight, like we're able to set up a, a process where they're delivering every night they deliver to a different neighborhood in the town. Um, so everyone knows on, you know, Thursday night, we order from Chimps because that's our way of keeping them in business and keeping them operating. And there's just, it's, it's astonishing when you realize like just the impact of what this is happening. And, um, you know, in what, five weeks, we've gone from three and a half percent unemployment, 50% low to pretty much knocking on the door of the great depression. So it's, it's insane. We yeah. tried to keep it light, but we're ending on a more somber note. Um, <laughs> Sorry for but, that. Uh, uh, you know, I, as, as, as part of the uh, programming director for this episode, I, I felt I would be remiss if I didn't at least uh, mention that. And there are great examples of companies who are doing something like this, who are retooling their, uh, you know, retooling their production lines to uh, create various you know, various apparatus or, or whatever it is for healthcare workers or, or, or help people out there. But um, yeah, it's a, uh, it, I, I hope to see more of it in the, in the near future. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right, guys. Well, Hey, it's the weekend. And what we mean by that is that the week doesn't end. So um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's keep enjoy, it rolling, enjoy, huh? <laughs> enjoy your houses this weekend. Uh, you'll, 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 you'll just be less billable. Um, but enjoy enjoy your time at home. Enjoy your time with your your loved ones if they're there with you. Um, and uh, stay safe. And uh, we'll pick it up on Monday. 